Okay, I'm back to talk about who should be buyers and sellers at the 2020 MB1, uh, 2021 NBA trade, trade deadline. We're going to be going through every single team, and I'm going to say if they should buy, sell, or stay. Buy means go all in, get the players that could help your roster be better right now. Stay uh, just means keep the same roster. I think they're good where they're at right now. And then sell means you should get away your assets and probably just give up on this season. Uh, we'll start off in the Eastern Conference with the Philadelphia 76ers. I think in my opinion, for the most part, they should stay. Uh, they should buy in just very, very small, minute ways. Uh, just getting little pieces that could help out their roster. Like if they made a trade for, per se, P.J. Tucker, that would be a good move for them. But I don't really think they need any major moves. Just little pieces on the bench uh, could help. But for the most part, I think this roster is good. Uh, the Nets are in a similar situation. They just need to buy in making very, very smart, savvy moves that would help out this roster. And uh, mostly on the defensive side of the ball, we all know that could be much better for them. So they just need to get uh, decent players who can help on defense. And I think that would be uh, the way they could help their team the most. I think the Bucks uh, should probably buy, but I do like this roster for the most part uh, where it is right now. Love Bobby Portis off the bench. Obviously, they have a good starting lineup. I think their roster is good. I'll always say I'm more just worried about Mike Budenholzer as a coach holding back this team. But just strictly as a roster, I think this team is really, really nice. And they could just do little uh, pieces. Like, I think their guard defense off the bench could be a little bit better. Uh, they could always use as much shooting. But for the most part, this team is good. Uh, the Boston Celtics absolutely need to be buyers at the trade deadline. They're a team that needs to make moves. They've looked better recently, and I'm happy about that. Uh, but they cannot be satisfied with where they're at right now. They need to make moves, need to get more depth, uh, need to get better wing play, and definitely, definitely are going to be buyers at the trade deadline, especially with that Hayward trade exception. There's no excuse for this team not to be a buyer. Uh, the New York Knicks, I think they should just stay where they are. I really like the construction of this roster. I think it's a very, very nicely built roster. Obviously, they're not going to be like a crazy team or anything, but they're going to uh, put up a fight every single night. The coaching is great. I just like a lot of the young talent on this roster, and I'd much rather just have the New York Knicks all grow these guy t guys together and keep them while they're playing good basketball instead of making any major moves. Uh, I think the Miami Heat should definitely be buyers at the trade deadline. The thing that they need most is the four position. Uh, they really just don't have much there. They're really, really missing Jay Crowder, and that was definitely a huge free agency loss for them. Uh, so if they could get a four, I think this team could be uh, very, very good. Jimmy's been playing great basketball. Bam has been good all year. And now with Goran Dragic back, they've definitely looked better recently. 7-3 and three in their last 10. So if they could somehow get that 4 to complete their team or maybe make a Victor Oladipo trade, I think that'd be an amazing move for them. I think the Charlotte Hornets have to be buyers at the trade deadline. I love, 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 love the Nikola Vucevic to Charlotte Hornets rumor so much. I think that's a beautiful fit for them. This team is really nice. Uh, got a lot of talent on here. Got a lot of young players. And if they could get that center of the future, I think that's where they put everything together and raise their team to a whole nother level. Uh, the Raptors are definitely a bit of a interesting and weird case for me where – I don't I just don't know what this team should do to be honest. Like they're playing solid recently, but I think once the Pacers are healthy, they'll be better than them. The Hawks are creeping up a little bit. Uh whew. I'm going to say they should be sellers and that's mostly coming from the fact that I think Kyle Lowry could be traded just due to how good Fred Van Vliet's been playing, but that's definitely a weird case. Uh, the Bulls, I would just keep this roster. They've been decent this year. Uh, I've definitely been around where I expected, which is good. Levine's been great. Uh, I mean, if you could make a Lonzo Ball trade, do it. If you could get uh, some more veteran players, do it. But for the most part, I really like this team and like where they're going. I just think the only move that they could make that would be good is the Lonzo Ball trade. And, and with how well he's been playing, I don't even think that's really realistic. Uh, the Indiana Pacers... Uh, they're at a really, really weird spot. 
at this point, I would just stay because you don't really have much flexibility to make big moves. At this point, you just kind of need to get healthy and hope things start to turn around. It's just kind of a lost season for the Indiana Pacers, to be honest. So I would just keep the team and more reevaluate the roster once we see when they're fully healthy uh, in the offseason. The Atlanta Hawks, I would I would probably um this is a, this is definitely another really tough team to decide what they should do just due to the fact that they are pretty close to being in the play in and the east is so close as a whole that they could really climb up. John Collins is a super interesting player as far as potential trades. I would probably oof I would probably sell See, the thing is, like, I would sell some, but I'd also buy, like, I wouldn't mind if they traded uh, a couple of their players. But So I'm just going to say stay. They're a super weird situation. For the most part, I'm just going to say stay. Hopefully you can get healthy. And then in a very similar case to the Pacers, get healthy, see what this roster does look like when they're fully healthy, and then reevaluate it in the offseason. Uh, the Washington Wizards, I think this should be buyers at the trade deadline. They've been playing well recently, and I think this is their opportunity to try and take advantage and try and get into that play-in tournament. So you got to get this roster better. you got to continue to get more defenders on this roster, and I definitely think they should be buyers at the deadline. Uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers, I think they should uh, be sellers uh, in the fact that I think they should – Maybe move on from a guy like Larry Nance if they want to go in more of a youth movement, which I think they are going to. Uh, but for the most part, I do like this roster, uh, and I do think they have most of their core. So maybe if you just traded Larry Nance to a team that really needs some defensive help, you could get some picks out of that, continue to bolster up your future. So I would sell some of the veterans, but for the most part, this team uh, is where they need to be asset wise uh the orlando magic i would definitely sell i mean this team has dealt with so many injuries they're just not a good team this year i think it's time to go uh in a new era and go in a new direction in orlando vucevic has been great for them and he's the only reason they win games but i just think at this point it's kind of a lost cause continuing to have him on the roster at this point, I just want to see him freed. I want to see him traded to somewhere we could at, where he could actually help winning basketball. And it's just a lost season for them. And the Pistons should absolutely sell. Really like what they're doing. I uh, love what Troy Weaver is doing over there at, as a GM. So if they could move on from a DeLon Wright, uh, Mason Plumley, and get assets, which I think you can because those guys could be solid role players on good teams, uh, I would definitely try and trade those uh, guys a team who needs another ball handler and a team who needs a backup center would definitely love both of those guys on the roster i think their young core is pretty nice so just continue to trade the old guys and continue to get assets for the future now going on to the western conference for the utah jazz i would just stay where you guys are at uh, i really just don't think there's much flexibility for this team uh, but that's a good thing this team is right where they need to be looking absolutely perfect uh, shooting the ball very, very well. They haven't been as great in their last 10, uh, but they're still a very good team. And at this point, there's not really anything that's like a glaring hole. The only thing is maybe another playmaker off the bench, but this team is perfectly fine where they are. Uh, the Phoenix Suns, I love this team so, so much. I think it's one of the most beautifully constructed rosters in the entire league. So I would just keep it where it's at. The backcourt is fantastic. They got some good guards off the bench. The wings on this team, gritty, good defenders. They all fit super well. Uh, DeAndre Ayton's a good big. Dario Saric has been uh, very good playing the backup center and the backup four as well. Playmaking like he's always been able to, but he's finally been putting that role to play and make. Uh, I think Jalen Smith can grow throughout the year. This team is just nice where they're at, and I would definitely just keep with them. Uh, the Los Angeles Lakers... I think they're still going to be uh, the championship team. Obviously, they haven't looked great since Anthony Davis has gone down. They're 3-7 and seven in their last 10. But I still think they're better than every other team in the league. Uh, I just think at this point, you're just waiting for Anthony Davis to be healthy. Uh, obviously, you want to improve your roster if you can. But I just don't really see a clear avenue for them to do so. 
Like, if they could get a more consistent shooter uh, instead of Wesley Matthews, that'd be great. But, like, what is Wesley Matthews' value on the market? I don't really think it's anything. So I would just stay where they are. Uh, the Clippers, I would definitely be buyers at the deadline. Mostly coming from the fact that I think they need a playmaker. And if you could somehow get your hands on Kyle Lowry in like a three-team trade or just a direct trade, please do everything you can to do that. Uh, you would have to put Luke Kennard in that trade, which he hasn't been impactful for them anyway. You'd probably have to give up a good piece of Marcus Morris, and then you would have to address the four position even more uh, after that. But I just want them to get a playmaker so, so bad. I think that would be the thing that takes them to the next level. So if you could get a Kyle Lowry or even a lesser level and just get a solid playmaker, that'd be huge for them. Uh, the Portland Trailblazers, at this point, I mean, I feel like the roster is almost as good as it's going to be. I don't really know what they could get that would help that much at the trade deadline at this point. I just want to see them get healthy, and I think they should just wait to get healthy. They're a good team, and I just don't think they have an avenue to get much better. Uh, the Denver Nuggets, I would definitely be trade. Uh, I would definitely be buyers at the trade deadline. I would uh, try and get just forwards who are versatile defenders. That's the thing that they need uh, the most. Get a PJ Tucker on the roster. I'm gonna recommend a lot of people get PJ Tucker, but that's a team that could definitely use someone like that. Uh, just need versatility at the forward position on the defensive side of the ball, and I think this team is good. Uh, but that's the thing that I think would really take them to the next level. So I would definitely be buyers and try and improve this roster. The San Antonio Spurs, I'm staying exactly where I am if I'm the Spurs. This team is nice, young talent, uh, a good number one option in DeMar DeRozan, solid bench. Like uh, This team isn't great, obviously, but they're very, very well-rounded, a good basketball team. And I would definitely keep uh, where they are because they are playing uh, much better basketball than expected and are surprising a lot of people. The Dallas Mavericks, I would definitely be buyers at the trade deadline. The team is really streaking right now, 8-2 and two in their last 10. Luka has been ridiculous. Like, Luka has been so crazy in their last 10 games, just dominating, man. He's been a blast to watch. He's been absolutely killing it. Jalen Brunson is balling. Uh, I would just... Uh, try and continue to get more shooting around Luka. More consistent shooting is the big thing for me. Uh, maybe pull off a Victor Oladipo trade. His value is so low right now that you really wouldn't have to give up much for it. You got an expiring contract in James Johnson, which could definitely help you uh, get a pretty nice trade. You got Dwight Powell as well. I think they should definitely be buyers, and I think they could definitely improve their roster in a significant way and look scary going into the playoffs. Uh, the Golden State Warriors, I would just stick where they are. They have the Minnesota Timberwolves pick, which even though it's not looking like they'll get it this year, even though they still have a chance to get it, they would get their unprotected pick next year. Klay Thompson is coming back. And for me, uh, just like a lot of these other teams, their team that I would wait to see get healthy and wait to see what happens with the Timberwolves pick. And then the offseason is where you potentially make some big, big moves. Uh, the Memphis Grizzlies, I would... I would just stay where they are. I mean, the one thing that I would like to see them get if they could get it is just an explosive score off the bench. But other than that, this team is performing well, even without Jaron Jackson Jr., who, in my opinion, is their best player. So I would just wait till he gets healthy, which should be pretty soon. And I think this roster is definitely going to be at least a play in team and could be really dangerous. So I would just stay where uh, I was if I was the Memphis Grizzlies. The New Orleans Pelicans, I would definitely sell. Uh, a lot of these players don't fit together. It's why they're super underwhelming. Uh, a team like the Oklahoma City Thunder has the same record as them, even with much less talent. And it's because the Pelicans don't fit together. So if you could somehow get rid of Eric Bledsoe, please do it. Uh, just try and get better fit on this roster because roster fits terribly together. Uh, the Thunder, I would just, I mean, I would sell like George Hill. Uh, and I would try and get anything for Trevor Ariza, who hasn't even played a game for them. But for the most part, this team has their core. Uh, if you could trade Al Horford, which I think would probably be more of an offseason move just because that's one less year on his contract. Uh, we'll see if he can keep this play up for an entire year. I just think you could uh, trade some of your smaller veterans. But for the most part, this team is pretty solidified. Uh, the Kings, I would be sellers. Uh, at this point, your season is lost. You guys are not a good basketball team. Uh, one of the worst teams in the league, tied with the Cavs right now for, what is that, the sixth worst, 
fifth team in the league, fifth worst team in the league. Uh, they're bad this year. Simply enough, they're too up and down. And recently, it's been a whole lot of down. So I would try and trade like Harrison Barnes to maybe the Celtics get get some first round picks for that. You know, I think that'd be a great move for them. Uh, yeah, I would just try and get rid of your veterans. Uh, maybe the only thing I would uh, try and get is just more depth. But at this point, I think it's a lost season for the Kings. The Rockets should be the biggest seller at the deadline. At this point, you, your team just needs a complete reset. You need to stop trying to be a formidable formidable basketball team because even with you trying to be decent, you guys have lost 13 in a row. Obviously, Christian Wood being out doesn't help. Everybody knows that, but your team just isn't that great anyway, so you need to trade P.J. Tucker, maybe trade Daniel House, Ben McLemore, just... At this point, I think you need a hard reset. Get as much assets as you can. It's going to be a long rebuild, and you have to accept it at this point. You have to accept that the James Harden trade, even though you got all those picks, was a bit of a mistake. Try and get rid of all depot because he clearly doesn't want to be there. Get any value out of him and just trade the vets. And the Timberwolves, I would I'd be sellers, I guess. I mean... This roster just is bad. Like, this team is really, really bad. Can't stay healthy, and it's just not a good constructed roster anyway. Uh, if you could get a four that is a defensive guy alongside Carl Anthony Towns, I think that would be great. And if you could get any forwards, to be honest, that can shoot, I would do that. But I would honestly move on from some of these young guys because even if I do think they can be good, I don't think they're going to be good with the Timberwolves. Josh Kogi very good defender and you want that but he can't hit a three-point shot to save his life Jarrett Culver I think at this point his confidence is completely crushed with Minnesota so he probably has to go somewhere else this team's kind of a lost cause but I, I guess they should be sellers I mean if you could get like Aaron Gordon that'd be cool but this team is just this team is just pretty pretty bad